Hi, um, welcome to this short tutorial on Zoom settings. So we're looking at the settings that you can uh, control prior to starting a Zoom meeting or a Zoom lesson. So I'm going to share my screen with you. And I've already opened up Zoom. So Zoom is installed on my laptop here. So we, I've just opened that up and that's what we're looking at here. And we want the little cog wheel right up in the far right hand corner of the screen with settings. So give that a click. Um, that'll open up this window and we do have some very basic settings here that we can control. But where we actually want to go is down the bottom here where it says view more settings. So I'm going to click on that and hopefully you can see that my uh, Google Chrome icon is flashing down here because it wants me to log into Zoom. So I'm just going to close that window now and pop into Google Chrome. Uh, now I need to sign into my Zoom account. Oh, there we go. I'm just going to use Google. OK, so now we're in the main settings menu for Zoom where we can control pretty much everything. Uh, there's a lot of settings here, so I'm just going to take you through the main ones that you would be interested in. So waiting room is on and that is a default setting and I'd advise you to keep that on. Uh, from a safeguarding point of view, um, then that allows you to see who is in your waiting room and it allows you to uh, admit them or not. Also, if the worst comes to the worst and you need to eject somebody from a meeting, uh, that means they can't get back in again without going through the waiting room. There's an option there that needs to be ticked to say that everyone goes into the waiting room so nobody can bypass the waiting room. We come down uh, further. And I think the next setting we're interested in here is join before host, which I've got turned off. So that allows people to join the meeting before the host arrives. So I don't want that to happen. I don't want them to come into the waiting room before I've opened the meeting. I'll always make sure I open my meetings at least 10 minutes early, uh, so I don't want them sitting in the waiting room before I'm in there. So I have that as, as off. This is an option, uh, helps keep the uh, room a little bit quieter, possibly. Um, mute participants upon entry. They can unmute themselves, uh, but that's something they actively have to do. Uh, you know, they're kind of, I've got a real strong preference on that, whether you have them muted upon entry or not. That's kind of a personal preference, really. So we'll carry on down again. OK, so chat is the next one that I've got here. Um, allow participants to send messages that are visible to all participants. So I've got that on. Uh, I can, if I want to, pre prevent participants from saving chat. But you know there, there may be discussions going on in there that I want them to keep. Uh, so again, it's up to you, depending on what your class um, is like what the content is going to be. You can stop your participants from saving the chat if you want them to, but I, I have the chat on so they can send uh, public messages, but I do have private chat turned off. Uh, that That is something I would definitely not change. So participants, the students cannot send private messages to each other during your lesson. Moving down a bit further, auto save chat. So I have that on. Uh, that means whilst I'm recording my lesson, then it will also record all of the chat and send it to me in the format of a text file as well. Moving down a bit further, file transfer. Um, so I've got that on. Uh, that allows me and the participants to share files uh, in chat so we can upload files to chat. What you can do is you can also tick this box, which then uh, you can dictate what kind of file types are shared. So I don't have that on for staff, but I probably would have that on for students uh, and I would ban executable files, so .exe, because uh, potentially they could carry um, something harmful or a virus in there. So I might only allow, for example, text files, Word documents, PowerPoints, uh, notes, things like that to be shared and uploaded by participants, by the students.
So co-host is the next one. I have that on all of the time. So that allows me to make any one of my students, participants or a colleague, if I've got somebody joining me in the meeting, it allows them to be a co-host. Uh, so they're pretty much the same rights then to control things as the host does. So that's a nice little thing for employability. You can allocate a virtual room leader, one of your students to virtual room leader by making them a co-host. Then they can help you out with chat, launching polls and monitoring chat, uploading files and things like that. Um, moving down to the next one there, polling. So I have that turned on and that allows the host to uh, issue polls out. It's personal preference really, but I like the control toolbar to be on all the time. Otherwise it means, you know, I've got to go hunting for it just by moving the mouse down to the bottom of the screen. So it uh, doesn't occupy much of the screen on a laptop. So I like to have that uh, on all of the time. This one, uh, I would normally have that off. I've got it on for the moment so that you can see it, uh, see the Zoom screen. But normally, if you have, I'd always have that off usually. So that means when you switch to screen share, it doesn't show what's currently on your screen. It doesn't show the camera. It just shows whatever applications are open. So that would normally be off. I've only got that on because I actually want you to see the Zoom screen at the moment. So screen sharing I've got on at the moment uh, and at the moment I've only allowed the host to share files. Um, but it is, you know, it, depending on what you're doing, if you want learners perhaps to upload a piece of work, uh, then you can switch that to all participants, which would allow all students to upload um, uh, to share the screen. But it might be, you know, that if they're doing work that you want to see and uh, that they can share the screen with other participants. You might want to do that maybe in small groups, but generally I have that as host only, just for a safeguarding point of view. So annotations, I have that on all of the time, uh, and uh, we, I have that box ticked to allow saving. If you only want you to be able to annotate, you can tick that box, but generally I want uh, feedback from the students, so um, I allow annotations for all. Whiteboard, I have that turned on so we can uh, use the shared whiteboard and I allow uh, saving of the content with the whiteboard as well. Nonverbal feedback I have on as well. So nonverbal feedback is the uh, raise hand, yes, no, going too fast, going too slow, I need to go to the toilet. It's um, under participants menu when you're in the meeting. Uh, so I have that on. And I have also meeting reactions on as well, which is the thumbs up, clapping hands, um, uh, heart for like this, etc. Allow removed participants to rejoin. I, I have that off. Um, can't imagine any situation where I'd remove somebody and then want them to come back in again. So, uh, I mean, they, they can rejoin another meeting, but I, I would normally have that switched off. Allowing participants to rename themselves, I have on because uh, it might come up with the name of their tablet or their computer or a nickname. And one of the first instructions I give to students is to uh, rename themselves with their full first and second name. Uh, so I have that on. And the last one of the settings that we look at in here is breakout rooms, which I have on. So that allows the host to set up breaking rooms, break breakout rooms. And you can see I've got ticked here, allow the host to assign the participants to a breakout room. So that means I can uh, force people to go into breakout rooms. I can use auto allocation or I can decide who goes in which particular room. So you can see there's an awful lot of settings in here and I haven't covered them all. Uh, but those are the main ones that you would use uh, in the in the first instance to set up online learning. So I hope that pro provides um, some help to you and, and I'll record some other short tutorials on how to um, control the settings in a Zoom meeting. Hope to see you soon on another one of these short tutorials. Bye for now.